Hello, welcome to another Rahalastapa, and uh, this one is recorded at the Lowry Theatre with a wonderful friend of the show, Sarah Millican, uh, who also features on one of the trump cards of my new trump game. You can get by backing our Kickstarter at rahalastapa.co.uk slash Kickstarter. Go and check that out for some amazing rewards, which will help us film these shows. If you like seeing the films of the shows, this is the good way to get that done. Um, my dog's about to attack uh, a... Uh, um, we are also out on tour. That's uh, Ben Evans, that one, the Ben Evans who asked Steve uh, Fry that question. Fry that question. Uh, there's a dog chasing uh, one of those cameras that fly around. It's amazing. Drones, what are they called? I don't know. It's not the point. That's not what we're here for. Uh, we're on tour. Go to rahalaspa.co.uk slash gigs or richardhane.com slash rahalaspa.co.uk slash tour. You can see all the amazing acts we've got coming up, all the great places we're coming to. Uh, and please book tickets to that. Some of them are selling really well. Some of them aren't selling that well. So, but if you book ahead, that will help us sell out or get sell some more tickets. Go to richardhane.com slash gigs, rahalaspa.co.uk. Uh, help us with the Kickstarter if you want us to carry on filming these. If you don't, don't matter. We'll just do them as audios. Bye. Enjoy the show. It's Sarah Milligan. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Lowry Theatre in Salford. You're already much better than last week's audience, I can tell you that already. Please welcome a man who doesn't care if the theatre's on fire like Jason Manford does the pussy. It's Richard Herring! Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you, welcome to the show. Love to see you all. Thanks for coming out. Uh, Welcome to Richard Herring's Labia Stretching Time podcast. <laughs> Might be a bit bluer the second <laughs> second show. Uh, it's uh, it's podcast. It's not a sexual thing. Uh, it's just uh, how far can those things stretch? They seem so stretchy, don't they? Just get a different guest on every week. See how far <laughs> we can stretch them. It's a scientific curiosity thing. There's nothing. If you're enjoying this in a sexual way, there's something deeply wrong with you. Uh, but I was hanging out at the KFC Salford drive through <laughs> The other day, some nice guys down there, they'd had a military-grade hand grenade with them, and they, um... <laughs> just larking about. They called it Rehelestabus, I don't know if that's gonna... <laughs> I accidentally, completely by accident, chanced across the TripAdvisor. I wasn't gonna do tri two TripAdvisors, but I chanced across the TripAdvisor for KFC Salford drive through <laughs> And it's fucking unbelievable. I'm going to spend a lot of time. <laughs> KFC drive through Salford is the worst KFC in the UK. I mean, don't feel bad. It's not the world. You feel danger right from the entrance door. Also, if you do not ask for mayo and ketchup, they do not give you. <laughs> and that guy says, value one, service three... Food five. Uh, five. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's, uh, it's still the worst KFC in the UK. It's still good food, though. The food's excellent. The worst KFC I've ever been to, and I've been to lots. It was the smallest portions I've ever seen. He had a photo, it looked like a normal portion to me. Uh, staff member picked nose, then f licked fingers. Finger licking good, isn't it? That's why that's, that's, that everything's been. And then I found some more. <laughs> There's more. I mean, I don't know if I can read these out legally, but they're on TripAdvisor and I, they're not my opinion. Rats everywhere. <laughs> Is this accurate? In excess of 20 rats in and around drive through These rats were really big and they were, And this was their regular feeding area. That suggests that guy's been monitoring them like Bill Oddie, the rat world. The staff wasn't interspersed in the problem, is what it says. I think they meant interested, but they've come. <laughs> Do not eat here. Rat urine is a big issue and will make you ill. <laughs> then Simon T says, always rats. Always rats running around in the bins and in the bushes nearby. When you bring it to the attention of the server, they blame McDonald's across the road. <laughs> 
Anyone eating the KFC tonight? There's that old story about KFC again. I don't know if this can go out, isn't there? About the rats in the. They say if this portion was that small, maybe they should get some of these huge rats in. My sister's sister's friend. Yeah, there was a, during last week's show. There was a fire in uh, Jason Manford's in the in the smaller theatre here at the Larry. Um, it's not. He's not a big Salford act, and. Um, <laughs> And uh, apparently one of his audience's phone went on fire. I mean, the things people will do to avoid watching Jason Manford. <laughs> but Jason Manford, we heard the, the, the beeps were going, weren't they? We didn't care. They thought the place was on fire. We don't care. We want to watch Jimmy Cricket. No one's going to fire, can't stop us. And the fire didn't burn our theatre down. I'm saying he's got a pipe, papal knighthood. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Convert. <laughs> Convert now. So, um... Right, let's crack on. We've got a fantastic guest. It's actually a sixth time I have interviewed this person, which I think makes a... There's three in Edinburgh, and this is the third of the... Uh, Rehearsal. Thank you. She's probably... Oh, no, hold on. That's someone else. <laughs> She's probably best known for her appearance. This is about the sixth one of these I've done, so it's getting hard. It's best known for her appearance on Richard and Judy, where Richard and Judy told her... Where Richard Mady told her that she, no one had laughed at her to begin with. <laughs> Let's see if that's true. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Miss Sarah Millican. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello. Hello. Again. That's all right. I just wanted to let you know I've used up all my respect on Jimmy Cricket, so there's been no, there'll be no, there'll be none of that. What last week? You haven't <laughs> replenished yeah, your respect in a whole week, have you? The whole week has passed, and still I have no respect left. For, so it may be a slightly racier show. I assumed that was why I was on like second. Yeah. Oh, the other the week. week. Yeah, you've been the waiting other, for the other week. <laughs> Shit. I was doing. We have a public well. vote. We have both acts here. We have a public vote. They vote who they want to see, and then, and then you come back the next week and you won this week's one against uh, oh. Jason. Jason Manford was the other guest. Oh. And then people didn't want to see him. But he's he's in, a, he was in the little room, yeah. yeah. Uh, hi. Hello, how are you doing? I'm all right. Good. <laughs> I'm, ner I'm almost nervous are for you? these. Yeah, because I like you, yeah. but then I hate you. <laughs> so, like, because sometimes you're really nice to me, and then other times you're sort of odd and a bit... Pervy, would you say? <laughs> yeah, is that the word I'm looking for? It's hard to psych yourself up for pervy, um, but I've tried. If it so... is perverted to want to have sex with you, Sarah, then yes, I am perverted. <laughs> so I guess I am perverted. I always think that when people send me messages on Twitter saying, oh, I really fancy you, I always think, fucking weirdo. <laughs> but I, don't, I think that says more about me than anything else. Had you remember, you mentioned in your book your appearance on Richard and Judy. I couldn't yeah. actually find it in your IMDb page. So uh, <laughs> Just, I was looking I, for it, too, I, but I thought you've said that you're on it. So you Is the responsibility a... mine to complete my ID, <laughs> I IMDb page? I don't know. Um, I, uh, it, was, it, was, it was just ahead of the Funny Women final. Oh, God, so it was very early on in yeah, your... Yeah, a long time ago. And it was, well, it was back when he was on the telly and I was just on the radio. <laughs> Um, and he, so the two of them were interviewing us and there was me and another two of the finalists from Funny Women and he asked me to tell the story about the first time, my first gig and the story was that I went on stage, I did five minutes and the first two and a half minutes nobody laughed and then I told a story about my uh, dad that got this big woof of laughter and I immediately thought well that bit needs to go to the beginning because that's how <laughs> comedians brains work and he decided to run with the other bit of the story <laughs> and he said was that, that was because you were rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> and I shouted at him. Uh, and then uh, when I went into work the next day, they'd all made signs up saying, no, I wasn't rubbish, Richard. And they were all around my desk. <laughs> and there was balloons and everything. They were very proud of me, my work colleagues. <laughs> I'm in the funny woman final, Richard. I'm not rubbish. <laughs> I know, exactly. Idiot. What a horrible man. So, um, <laughs> love, I'm hoping to get him on a guest on this, actually. So, um, I think you can ask him if he remembers. <laughs> it'd be amazing. Um, yeah, I, I did. We did talk about this a little bit backstage. I've had, uh, I've, I didn't mention it to, to Jimmy Cricket. I've had food poisoning quite recently. <laughs> I like that you've saved that anecdote for me. Yeah, I'm I, so proud. I thought you would like it. Thanks. Yeah, I do like bodily functions. Yeah. Tell me a bit of information then. So, when did it start? So on Thursday, 
Uh, I, everything's, I've been very healthy recently, you've noticed, I've lost a lot of weight. I've lost about a kilo and a half in the last two days. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> genuinely. <laughs> Uh, I'd had eaten quite. I'd eaten a bit too much. So I was thinking of, of what though. But healthy stuff mainly. Like I'd had. That's what, your problem. For, for breakfast, I had steak and uh, eggs. Which is good. You it's a good steak start and today. eggs yeah, for breakfast. Good start. But I How think decadent it, are you? I think this is a good. This, I do I have steak and eggs uh, about once a week for breakfast, nice. and then I have stir fries for breakfast now. With shut up. I do. It's amazing. Is that what you have to do to be thinner? Yeah. I'm not gonna fucking bother. <laughs> <It's amazing. laughs> I'll just stick to me Frosties with nah. jam on. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. I ate a few things over the day and I had a few little kind of healthy-ish snacks. What's not, a healthy-ish snack? I'm not snack? eating chocolate anymore. I don't eat chocolate anymore. So I, I was having some protein bar things and had some nuts and stuff. Oh, like I can it. see why you had the shits then, yeah, Flower. Well, in the middle of the day, my dog was sick, right? And then I, then I felt a bit ill and then I was sick later on. The only thing me and my dog both ate, we don't share many meals. So your dog having stir fry for breakfast? <laughs> I gave her a bit of the steak this morning. In the morning, I gave her the fat off the steak, uh, and she was sick. And then I was, then I was sick. I'd had a second steak. <laughs> I've got my wife. Did you? Is your dog like the canary down the mine? <laughs> <laughs> like try? Oh, he's sick. Then I. You mean should have been a bigger gap between it, his steak and I, your I, steak. I don't usually have two steaks in a day, so it could have been this. Okay, but. My wife suddenly got into steak because I've had steak and she suddenly liked steak and she bought some nice steak from the butchers I just had. It was from Waitrose, actually, the one that made me sick. So, you know, thanks a lot, Ian Waitrose. <laughs> uh, I didn't feel I hungry. Never knew his first I didn't name. feel hungry and my, my wife <laughs> wanted to eat the steak. So I said, oh, well, I'll, have, I'll eat it anyway. Oh. And then I was feeling ill and then I, was, and then we, I was, went and had a lie down and then I was sick. How do you know that it was food poison and not just overeating? It could be, but I'm not, I hadn't overeaten that, that much because I was sick. You had two sticks. I went, I, went, I, went, I went to the toilet, I had diarrhea, and then I, no, I was sick, and then I had diarrhea, right? And when, I, when it's happened before, I had, when I was in Ipswich, and I've talked about this on stage before, this is quite interesting to me. I hope you'll. I've been saving this up for a week. Um, in Ipswich, I was my birthday, and I had diarrhoea, and then I was going to be sick, and was in a hotel room, and there was no time to even flush the toilet. I had to be sick on my own diarrhoea. <laughs> that was not a pleasant... wasn't pleasant. And there was no... Was it, oh, see, there was I, would, no time. I think I would have been tempted to just puke in the sink. So, see, thank you, women, smart. It was so... Smart. I wouldn't have made the sink, and I was... I was, it was but how, well, how it was, fancy I was, was the hotel toilet that you had so much space in there? <laughs> It wasn't. I don't think it struck me. I knew I was going to be sick and I was sick on my own diet. This time... I think I did, you wanted I was, to be sick did, on your diarrhoea. I did the sick... No, I did the diarrhoea first and then I went, which way around did I did I had the sick first and then had diarrhoea on the sick, which is class... That's the classy way to do it. Of the two. And you sort of feel better because you don't like being sick, but... I having was diarrhoea once, on something... I was so once... It's a way of revenge, isn't it? It's a, re it's a revenge act. <laughs> Punishment. Yeah. I was once, when I was a kid, I was uh, retching into the sink in the kitchen because I yeah. couldn't have made it to the toilet. And I was about six or seven. And I used to, for bed, I had like a clown outfit on. Uh, not an outfit, like pajamas, but like clown style, like an all-in-one with the elastic and the elastic and the kind of, uh, kind of cuffs. And, and I was sick in the sink and at the same time needed a fart and thought, I was like six or seven, I'll just do the fart. And it, the fart was not dry. <laughs> and it hit the back of the clown outfit and ran down. And my mum said, thank God for the elastic cuffs. Because <laughs> I was sort of contained the whole time. So... I mean, it's a very clown-like... It is, well, now that's... A very clown-like so thing to happen. You should, <laughs> if you only had, had a hole in the back of your pants, that could have come out. <laughs> like Some a glitter. flower, yeah. Gl you've had glitter ready. I mean, both of our stories, it's the peripheral details that say that so much more you. about yeah. us than the actual sick and diarrhea. It's the fact you're wearing a clown outfit <laughs> as a seven-year-old. If I've been able to do the... <laughs> like that... <laughs> if I'd, like, vomited and then... <laughs> and then glitter... <laughs> Know what to do next time. Thanks. But for anyway, your so I was better on Friday. I was I just had diarrhea. No. Is that boring then? Yeah, it was all right, yeah. but it, I couldn't do anything. And then did I was thinking, did you take anything to... though? Pardon? Did you take anything? No, no, I'm, I know, I'm hardcore. Just let it come out. Yeah. I never know if you take something like emodium or something like that. Does that mean that you're just delaying? 
And then in a couple of days, you'll get that diarrhea. Or oh, is it actually drying it up? I always, I have IBS, so I always have a modium on yeah. me. So if I'd been like supporting you on tour or something, I would have, you could have knocked on my door and I'd have just given you some modium. But on the box, uh, it says, uh, it says, <laughs> works instantly within the hour. And those are two separate things. <laughs> it works instantly if you just stick it up the bottle at yeah, your bum. Yeah, the box. Yeah, yeah. Just, the, just wedge the box across the yeah. hole. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you're saying, does a modium just act as like a, a barrier, like a sort of da a fecal dam? <laughs> or is it, does yeah. it make you better? Is it making you better? Or is, or is it, it just turning just a little put, bit to concrete? Put the pin in it. Come back to that later. <laughs> when that? I'm not on stage. Yeah. Well, you should know if you take it. What happened? How does it work for you? I just... Well, I always enjoy my first poo back. Yeah. Because I think what it does, I think, in my experience, it sort of set, it kind of resets you back to like factory settings, you know, yeah. like. Because uh, the first poo is always how I imagine poos are supposed to be. Very little effort. Yeah. Lovely colour. <laughs> Hole. I think this conversation is very much what uh, Jimmy Cricket regrets about the way comedy has gone. Thank <laughs> <laughs> goodness he isn't here to see this. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad he was here last week and not this week. <laughs> it was funny because my daughter in the day, I, my daughter's now four and starting to get a little bit of a sense of humour, but I, she's sort of way ahead of me. Is it now? Are you judging that on how you, the response to you? That she's got a little bit no, of No, she doesn't find me funny. Oh, I was going to say, because okay. she might have an incredible sense of humour, but you might not be her thing. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a thing. I'm not her thing. But she said to me said the other day, Daddy, why don't we have, why, is, um, why isn't our bum in our nose? That, so when we needed a poo, we could just put our head in the toilet. She said that to me in the morning, and then in the afternoon, the evening, I had my head in the toilet. <laughs> thinking it's not so funny now. So she's not bright, but she can see the future. <laughs> she can, yeah. <laughs> But I, quite, I, would, you know, I wouldn't have thought of something like that before. She's obsessed with pooing on people's faces. That's her insult. She goes, did you do a poo in your face? Well, because she lives with you. Yeah, maybe. You have I'm had not... your head in the toilet yeah, recently. Terrible. She's a terrible girl. So um, I've been listening. I've been, I bought you, well, I think you sent me a copy of your book. You're uh, How to be champion. Yeah. Uh, but then I couldn't bother to read it. So I bought... With one of my audible credits. <laughs> oh, so you got it for free. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> but I have to pay for that. Uh, and the, uh, the audio book, which is, an, I think, an even better way to enjoy it. It's not, lovely to have oh. you read it yourself, which is always good. Yeah, of it's course. It isn't always the case, but... But I don't understand why not when that happens. Well, like Mary Beard, for example, doesn't read SPQR, but I reckon it's because it's so fucking long and she's written it already. She's like, I don't want to read that again. Yeah, I'm not spending yeah. ten no, days. No, fair enough then. Yours is only like nine hours long. You must have yeah. done two days it took you to do yours, right? Uh, well, um, so whether I should tell you this... Oh, fuck it. Um, it was going... I'm quite an oddly a good sight reader. It's a weird skill to have that doesn't really come in handy very often. Right. But I don't make many mistakes. And it should... I mean, it should be the case because you've written it, you know. Yeah. And when it got towards the end, uh, they said, oh, we'll only, we'll only need you for like half a day tomorrow instead of a full day because it's going faster than we thought. Great. And um, my husband <laughs> was doing his first live at the Apollo. And I realised if I'm fast on this, I might be able to get to London and watch him wow. from side of stage. So the last chapter is a little bit... <laughs> uh, <laughs> And then, because I had to go and pick up, I had to, because it was recorded in Manchester, and I had to go and drive home, pick up the dog, and then drive down to London, yeah. and then park up. And I got there just before, like about half an hour before he went on stage, and I got to watch him do his Aww. first live at the Apollo. So it was worth it, but I'm really sorry if the end of the <laughs> audiobook is a little bit fast. You can slow it down, I think, can't you? or can you make it a bit... Well, why doesn't everyone just make the, or, the, the other chapters a bit faster, faster and then just slow it to normal speed <laughs> for the last? That's a great idea. It's good. If I'd known, we could have just done the whole thing really fast. <laughs> that would have been better, yeah. yeah. Um, the, it's called uh, How to Be Champion, and in the opening, you talk about Gary, your husband, who's also a comedian, for people yeah. who don't know. He had other suggestions. You oh, asked yeah. him for suggestions for... Because he's very good at wordplay. Yeah, he's very good at titles for things. and Yeah, because that's how his brain works, of, yeah. of puns and of uh, that sort of thing. So I asked him, and he... Well, he suggested I put older and wider into the blurb somewhere. <laughs> and I said I wanted something with 
champion and he said heavyweight champion. <laughs> and I suggested, I was thinking of what could I be doing on the cover that might denote like champion or, you know, oh, that was, no, that was for the, for the show title was Control Enthusiast. And I said, like, what yeah. should I do on the poster? And he said, fat controller. And just everything he had, <laughs> like he should have filtered out and then said, oh, I can't think of anything, love. <laughs> But no, he's very honest, and he told them all. So I came up with an idea for his next tour, which was Short Jokes Fat Man. Um, but then he lost loads of weight, <laughs> so can't do that anymore. But, you know, he'll put it back on. He so. will, if after the diarrhoea has passed. <laughs> One and a half kilos. Just be sick. I mean, I was actually being sick, thinking, <laughs> this is quite good. This is, I mean, is that a bad stage of your diet? We're thinking, I plateaued for a little bit. This, I'm, I'm going to lose a kilo tonight. This is good. And did you get on the scale straight after? Yeah, yeah. Like, still dripping. <laughs> <laughs> and then I couldn't eat the next. I haven't really been able to eat today. It's just perfect. You haven't Probably. had two steaks today? I <laughs> had a bit of cereal and a ham sandwich from the Lowry Bar. You've had cereal today, yeah. like a normal person breakfast. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Stir fry Honestly, stir for fry. breakfast. You put a bit of chicken in there or toffee. I've had been in there. It's nice. Oh, I thought you said toffee. <laughs> toffee you can put in. Get really excited. Cashew nuts. Do you eat the cashew nuts? No, I don't cashew... like cashew nuts. Why not? What's wrong with the cashew nut? I just don't like them. Oh, I'm sorry. You I'm are... not going to have them for breakfast. You should have them for Does breakfast. Does anybody else have stir fry for breakfast? Exactly. See, a woman's done a fucking poll as well. No, I've checked. Nobody what about has. everybody in China, racist? <laughs> Move to China then. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to live in China. <laughs> Those guys, you know, it's good. It works out for them. Never seen a fat Chinese person, have you? I'm going to leave that quiet so you can edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots, because, you know, it's nice, because we've done so many, it's nice to have some... And now, I've read the book as well and then listened to the audio book, so I'm worried Did you not do it at the same time where no, you can follow it along done. with your finger? Yeah. yeah, I could have done, but it's, uh, it's nice for in the car, because, you know, you can be in the car and be having a book at the same time. Yeah, I understand um, how audio books work. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't work out if some of it seems familiar because you've told me before in the podcast or because I'd read it already, so if we, get, if we double up, you know, bad luck. It's bound to happen at some point. Um, uh, talk about when you were a kid. I, I like this, that you, were, you weren't really a performer as a child. Even you had a clown pyjamas, which was not mentioned in the book. Um, <laughs> but you used to perform from behind a curtain. Yes. Uh, so I used to write poems and want to read them aloud, but I was too nervous, so I used to stand behind the curtain. To your parents? Uh, to my parents, yeah. Parents. And I, so I was too sort of... Sta I had stage fright, so I'd stand behind the curtain and I'd read the poem aloud, and then if I did well, my mum would give me a banana. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a good job, like, I got over that, because, yeah. like, like, that's my job now, is to be <laughs> literally in front of yeah. a curtain... Nobody gives me bananas now, though. It's a I'll shame. give you a stir fry after this. I'll make you a stir fry. All right, thanks. I'll save it for my breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> it's more, more traditional. Um, and I thought the miners' strikes. The, the miners' strike was very interesting. Your dad was worked in the mines. As yeah. A, and so the, you were like massively affected by the miners' strike. But you write, write about this in a very interesting way. And like you, you wore your wellies for a whole summer. Cause yeah, I just didn't well. Fit. I just thought a lot of people when they talk about the minor strike, it's very sad. And so I did like, however, I can't remember it was a list. I quite like lists sometimes in books to kind of break it yeah. up a bit. And I wrote a list of like the excellent things about the minor strike, uh, just to have a bit of a different angle. And yeah, we because um, I, uh, I had so my shoes were too tight, but I knew there was no money, so I didn't tell anybody. And then my feet started to bleed because they were so tight. So then my mum, uh, we couldn't buy any shoes and it was like the summer holidays. So instead of, she'd probably just get me some for going back to school or whatever. So I just wore my wellies for the whole summer. And when you're a kid, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's not the funniest story in no, the world, but, uh, but yeah. No, but it's, it's all of that. The, the, and you got the Marks and Spencers... We're giving you're getting food from various yeah. places. So we got, yeah, we got given sort of tins that had labels had come off okay. and like end of day bread and stuff like this. And then Marks and Spencers wanted to get on the bandwagon, so they gave us thirteen trays of avocados. <laughs> and uh, the miners in South Shields didn't know what they were or what to do with them. Uh, probably just use them as ammunition, I guess. But uh, 
but yeah, we didn't know what to do. And I still, I still hadn't had one. Like I'd seen one, but I didn't have one till I went to Australia about five or six years ago. <laughs> so, but I was like, oh, I've seen these. But I just thought it was fascinating. Marks and Spencers were like, mm, we'll help. And we were like, what the fuck are these? <laughs> Good old Marks and Spencers. Um, <laughs> let's ask you an emergency question. We'll come Go back on, to it. We'll come back. It's a, it's a really excellent book. It get it grabs oh. you. Well, because it, it grabs you in with the. There's lots of funny stuff at the start, and in the middle, and at the end. <laughs> I haven't got to the end yet. Nice it goes save. a bit far. Goes a bit fast at the end. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just to get more in. But it's like this. It's a very moving. There's a lot of moving stuff in there. I think. Oh. A, lot, a lot of interesting stuff about love and. I mean, we've talked about. I think your. Um, Failures in love before, uh, yes. but uh, I picked up I, I picked up your book to do emergency questions with. That's not very good, is it? <laughs> no. This, well, this is no good emergency questions. Uh, how, how many outfits have you ever hung up that you brought with me? This isn't the right book. <laughs> Here we go. Emergency questions. We'll go because uh, uh, again, I've asked you a lot of these before. I don't think I've ever asked you if you'd prefer a ham hand or an armpit that dispenses sun. Oh, cream. I think you bloody have. <laughs> See, I came along to last week's show, you know, the one with Jimmy Cricket, and I thought, I'll sit by the side of stage and I'll learn, because I'll learn from it, and then I thought, all I'm going to learn is whether he wants ham hands or... <laughs> or, <laughs> or sun he, cream he, from his armpit, and he refused to answer, he didn't he? It, didn't he? Yeah. yeah, good lad. Good lad. <laughs> all right, here's, I don't think I've asked you this one before. What is the tamest image or thought that have, you have used for masturbatory purposes? <laughs> The yeah. I used to be able to masturbate. I mean, I used to be able to masturbate to most things. Did I used you? to be able to masturbate to what the skill? female contestants on Going for Gold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, then Henry Kelly would pop up and ruin it. That is, it, 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 it was difficult to. But you persevered. Keep it going. If there was a, you know, not all of them. I had, I was choosy. You had standards. Quite nice. low, but they were but, you know, they were a bit exotic, weren't they? Because they were um, from all over Europe. I've had, I've had a sex dream, <laughs> yeah. and I sometimes bring that back round. Okay. Uh, and that was, um, I met The Rock, uh, you know, Dwayne Johnson, and he gave me some kittens. And <laughs> that was it. <laughs> I like great. kittens, I like The Rock. Yeah. Tick, tick, done. Yeah. Yeah. I, could, I, I think could... it was probably, it's probably a confused sort of metaphor, isn't it? It's probably, yeah. I should have been giving him the pussy. Right. Instead of him just handing it to me. Yeah, that's, maybe. I mean, maybe that's where it was going, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's pretty well, tame, I'm isn't gonna it? I'm going to try and use it tonight, and I'll give you a ring straight after that, you know, it's kind of... Duran, ring me Duran, I don't mind. If I could describe the kit, one was tabby, one was whatever helps, whatever helps. I think, because I quite fancy The Rock, but I think all I really want is to sit on his hand like King Kong. <laughs> now that's getting too sexual. Um, <laughs> have I ever asked you this question? Do sperm have dreams? I mean, they're not all going to be about sperm <laughs> masturbating. Sperm yeah, they're masturbating. Mainly, they're mainly going to be that because um, I had to. Do they have dreams? Do sperm have dreams. Um, I mean, you know, that could be aspirations me, or. It makes me sad if they do yeah. because they never realise their dreams, do they? Or like no. one every. Maybe if the dream was to get in the egg, maybe that's every now and again, but mostly they're just, you know, wiped on a curtain or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do any. And that's any sperm's aspiration. I hope I can at least get yeah, onto the curtain. Yeah, hotel curtains. Yeah. I hope you might think, I hope I get shot a really long distance. I mean, it's... Not, <laughs> Land on a mirror! <laughs> it's, it's the game over for my ones, for that. They're, yeah. lucky, they're lucky if they get out the end. <laughs> That's what yours is like. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, there's like sometimes 600 million sperm in ejaculation, so even up to that, not always, but... Um, that means even Does that it, decrease as you get older? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. So is there like, what, 10 or 11 in yours? Yeah. <laughs> still, that's still, I've got a one and a half year old son that's still, they're still working into my well, 50s. It, well, it was then. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know now. <laughs> don't know <laughs> there was someone on Twitter talking about, you know, the America talking about an abortion and how uh, six weeks... Are you old. about to ask I'm me not, if I've ever had an abortion? Not, no. <laughs> This he isn't in the book, is it? We'll bring this in in a minute now. We, he was talking about how six week old, you know, they've changed the law so that if they can't have abortions mm. at, um, after six weeks in certain states. But, you know, I, I tweeted him and said, you know, what about the 600 million sperm you 
d- deposit every time you ejaculate. You're going to worry about those. Seems men don't care so much about those tiny cells as no. The, Did they reply? The Didn't get back to me no, on that one. No, that's a shame. Too busy masturbating over the idea. <laughs> um, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> We're laughing at wanking, not at abortion, so it's fine. I thought that was one of your questions in your new version of your book. <laughs> <laughs> Emergency question, Jimmy Cricket. Have you ever had an abortion? <laughs> well, if there's another volume, maybe we'll we'll go that way. <laughs> um, uh, we'll, we'll move, we're going to do one more, and then we're going to move on to my carefully prepared. What is your favourite cruciferous vegetable? I don't know what that word is. Uh, well, cress is a good example. I think broccoli. So what is no? But what's the definition of the word? It's the the cruciferous the, from the cruciferous family of vegetables. <laughs> you don't know, do you? <clears throat> so that things like no. cress or broccoli. So cress, is that the broccoli, two I've got to choose from? Watercress, <laughs> water land, broccoli, land <laughs> sky broccoli, tender stem. That's uh, a kind of broccoli. Yeah, bro- tender stem purple broccoli. broccoli. Purple broccoli. Purple broccoli. Um, what is my favourite of the five we have named? <laughs> Uh, well, cress is just something you grow as a kid. It's not yeah. eaten, is it? Well, that's a rude to the cress. Uh, um, <laughs> oh, you're yeah. a big cress fan. I'm a big fan of cress. <laughs> Do you have it for breakfast sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I'm going to say tender stem broccoli because okay. it's modern, isn't it? And it's yeah. less it's less sort of offensive on your plate. It doesn't feel like the sort of veg your mum would make you have. It feels a bit more middle class now, doesn't yeah, it? Because does. you can have it with a bit of garlic on or something like that, yeah. yeah Tender stem nice. broccoli. Very good. It's Sorry, not about I didn't wanking, prepare. mate. It's not all about wanking. No. Sometimes Classic I just question. jam one up me though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because it's it's not when it goes in, but it's when it comes out. Uh, all the little bubbles and the Knots and stuff, it's fucking great. That and the rock, and I'm away. <laughs> oh, I'm having dear. a lovely time, I really am. I'm just letting it all out. All the stuff I held back during Jimmy Cricket, I was being very polite. Last week? Yeah, last week. I'm still holding it back. Um, I like you've got some little uh, there's, you've got some little sort of things in your life that you do to stop you doing things. Well, you, you talk this about is such it, a clear question. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Someone just laughing backstage at how bad I am. Uh, <laughs> you talk about the book about this idea of having the hour delay on your texts to your. Oh, ex-husband. when I was getting divorced, yeah. yeah. But that's kind of a nice idea. You write something, then wait an hour, and then decide if you want to send the text. Yeah, so it's... Uh, I'm uh, When I got divorced, I felt like when I got good news, I wanted to text him, because he'd been my person I texted good news to for a long time. And then I had a, made a decision, because I didn't think that was healthy, so I made a decision to write the text and save it, and then instead of sending it, and then in an hour's time, if I wanted to send it, I was allowed to send it. And I never once sent it because by that time, your brains kicked in over your heart, I guess, and said, no, he doesn't, doesn't deserve the good news, whatever it is. <laughs> so it's very, yeah, it's very helpful. I seem to be like a go-to person whenever my friends split up with somebody because I like nailed divorce, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing. Yeah. But it's, it is, it's a, you know, I think that, well, it's probably with Twitter, people should have that fed into their Twitter. Maybe, oh, for sure. Maybe yeah. you should, like, tweet it. But then Twitter comes back and says, do you want this to go out? Are you sure? Are <laughs> you sure an hour later? Yeah. But then it would just be empty. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> but you also have a thing with stand-up, don't you, about yeah, whether the gig's been good or bad, you're only allowed to think about it until... Yeah. What is it, 12 o'clock so the next day or something? 11, so it's the... Yeah. It's uh, Millican's Law, as it's been told. So I started it for me, just because if you have a... If you if you perform and it it's it doesn't go brilliantly, and, it's, and often at the beginning, that's how it happens a lot, because you're learning. Then I didn't think it was healthy to go into the next gig thinking, nah, this is going to be shit, because then you will be shit again. So I made a rule. I was only allowed to beat myself up about it until 11 o'clock the next morning, and then I had to kind of shake it off... Um, but equally, it works if you've absolutely hammered it. So if you've nailed the gig and you feel like you're kissing your guns and you're, you know, carrying yourself out on your own shoulders, then you can only be smug about it until 11 o'clock the next day. Because if you go into a gig thinking, I'm going to be amazing, you'll also be shit. Yeah. So I did that and it really works. And then I mentioned it to somebody, you mentioned it to somebody, and then it got passed down to like 
new comics when I was, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and became Mulliken's Law. And it's just, yeah, I didn't know there was going to be a law about me. I'm excited. Um, but I think it's just a helpful way of kind of shaking it off. And I've been known to, like, put an alarm on to get up early to be smug for longer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Double steak day. <laughs> I'm not having a stir fry. I'm going to have double steak. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a good. I, I think it works in other areas of life as well. I don't think it's just a, yeah, no, a it's stand up a, thing. It's funny. It's, it's, if you've got the self control to do that, that's the thing. It's so hard, I think, to overcome no, it's not. this. <laughs> it's a rule. It's a law. Yeah, you can't just a break law. a law, Richard. That's, I like breaking laws. <laughs> but if you know that it's good for you. Yeah. Yeah. And it works. It really works. Well, I've never had a good gig. That's, I've still felt good about it at 11 o'clock yet, so I'll, I'll wait to let you know that way around. That but, yeah. night or the morning? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the morning after. <laughs> have you never felt like, have you never done something where you woke up? Mate, you know, in the early days. Of course days... I have. Every fucking night I wake up. <laughs> oh, I'm that's the best called in the world. deluded. But yeah, okay. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's good. I think, because I don't think it's good to think you're amazing or shit. I think you just have to. And every audience is different. Yeah. I mean, this is a totally different audience to like last week's show, for example. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> so I've actually seen both guests' live shows uh, from this week and last week quite recently, which is quite a rarity for me. It's almost like oh, I've done yeah. research. I saw yeah, you came and had uh, dip lunch at my yeah, house. Yeah, I did. Thank which you. Is, I always love to have you. Uh, and uh, then I came and saw you in St. Albans. Yeah, which was so hot. It in was. The... That's my main memory of it, is yeah. how hot it was. Everybody was fanning themselves with the whatever they had. And it was, yeah, it was, the sweat was running... Oh my god! I, it's one of those ones I was genuinely worried when I walked off stage in case it was just you know, going to be like a little puddle of just <laughs> sweat that had run down me. It was so hot in there. I think it's just every time we have a tiny bit of warm weather, the venues really suffer and the audience really suffer because they're just not equipped for like aircon or anything. No. So it was so hot in there. It was hot, but you would you know you you worked through that. That was amazing. The audience stuck with you, and it was it was you know difficult because hey, you're, you're not that good at comedy, and B. <laughs> We were really hot, you know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how good you are because I haven't seen you live for ages. <laughs> um, so. There's just always something on the telly when he's on tour, so... <laughs> but are they, uh, it's called Control Enthusiast. Yeah. Uh, and I, there was a great bit about bra fitting, which uh, made me, even though I've never had a bra fitted... Have you uh, not? No. Oh, you, should, you could do with could one. Give it a <laughs> Uh, it's interesting when you know that, that people say that you know you've got comedy's got to be about something recognisable, but actually it's not true, is it? It doesn't have to be a shared. Obviously, the women in the audience were enjoying it because it was a yeah. shared experience, but I think the men in the audience were also enjoying it because it was something that was so that I'd never really thought about. Yeah, and I think also as long as you paint a clear enough picture so that the people who haven't experienced it can feel like they know what you're talking about. Also, yeah. boobs are in it, so it's, that's good. Yeah, so you the were in. Like as soon as I mentioned boobs, boobs, you were in. <laughs> I was just, I used to be really good at taking bras off. Like, really good. I'm really good. I take one off, like, every day. I, yeah. Um, do you but mean, I, as I, a man? Yeah, not off of women that yeah. I was dating. I could do it like that, literally like that. Really? Yeah. Because I've done so many. I you was so you couldn't good do that with me because there's three catches I could on do mine. It. I could do you it. couldn't. I it's could. like fucking scaffolding. Is this a. <laughs> do I, but I don't think I could. It's so long. Because I've been married for so long, I've just realised I've not taken a bra off. For a long time. Is that bad? No, why it's, well, it's good that you've not taken anybody else's bra Well, I haven't bra taken anyone else's bra off. And she's just already bra. like, oh, here we go. Yeah. Got to get it over with. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> or maybe she just leaves it on. <laughs> she's just fully clothed and you've got to slot you in. Um, <laughs> I feel mad because your wife is so lovely she and so lovely. funny and smart. And, yeah. and you she's know, ended I keep, up with me. Yeah, I know. She's settled, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, is this not what you came for? <laughs> it's, actually, it's exactly what they came for. <laughs> but anyway, it was the bra fittings. It's yeah. difficult to get your bras fitted. Never struck me. Just go in and go, I am 32A. But they don't I believe you. Okay. They go, we'll see. <laughs> and then they measure you with their eyes, which I think is called staring. <laughs> And then they give you a bra that you don't know if it fits or not, but they say it does, and then you have to pay money. And sometimes they want you to buy matching knickers. And you're like, I'm not paying £15 for a pair of fucking knickers. Are you mad? I'll get a multi-pack and I'll be happy with them. 
but yeah, it's quite a stressful experience. And also, just the women aren't very nice. The Braff, I don't know if you've got any in the Braff, it's not very nice generally there. They, they, they come from the same school as like doctors, receptionists. They're quite terse and quite mean and they know, they know better than you about your own tits, which I don't believe. I'm just looking forward to what I can just wear a vest. And just as long as they're the tits are tucked in me knickers. <laughs> That's all that matters. It's, you know, the show is uh, quite uh, frivolous in many ways. It's about a lot of stuff about bodily functions. And yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's not my kind of humour. <laughs> uh, but there's a, but there's, I mean, there, you know, there's a heart to it. And it's quite, a, it's not, a, not overplayed. There's a lovely section about body image and, mm. you know, and just speaking out to well everyone in the audience about it really again especially the women I think but, but everyone's body image is, is now a, a thing it's, it's, it's nice to kind of have that element of seriousness amongst it all and to just get it over with quite quickly as well do you think yeah well I just deliberate? I don't yeah but I try and make things funny while they're being yeah. sort of why if there's a message try not to hammer it home and try not to be preachy and all those things because I don't like when I watch a comedy show and there's a bit where this is the bit where you're supposed to cry, and I think it's a fucking comedy show. <laughs> uh, but I, so I try and disguise it in amongst jokes as well. But I think it's nice. When I first started writing my first Edinburgh show, Steve Day, you know, the excellent comedian Steve Day, yes. he said to me, I said, he's writes a really good hour. He's really good at writing a good hour. And I said, Have you got any advice? And he said, You've got to give something away. And I said, Oh, I've got badges. And he said, No, from in there. <laughs> oh. So I, I think it's really nice for people to, Every as because I've got a lot of really loyal fans who come to every show. God bless them, and I think it's nice for them to get to know you a little bit more each time. And that's probably that bit that happens there, yeah. as well as all the frivolous, as you call it. Yeah, because I guess in the in the <laughs> I call the it comedy, whatever nonsense. you call it. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Some of it. it's just all, it could almost <laughs> almost be a joke. Some of it, but it's um, <laughs> almost. Oh, almost. you're so flattering. Um, but in the book is a lot about I mean, you're quite honest about sort of depression and how to cope mm. with depression I mean it's sort of you say at the start of the book it's like a self-help book which it sort of is it's your mm. it's, it's how you've got through your life and through difficult times in your yeah. life yeah it's an odd thing to write your autobiography and it's, it's I find it really oh when you were doing the um, TripAdvisor reviews yeah. uh, I initially was reading my Amazon reviews and I got a really great one for, that was one star for my autobiography and somebody said it's a bit me 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 <laughs> which I thought was <laughs> Like, you can't write that. That is awesome. But I did what my friend Jane Hill, who's a very good comic and writer, she said, it's a really good thing to do. If you see a review, so if you see a review that isn't very favourable about a thing of yours on Amazon, you can click on the person, you can have a look at what else they've reviewed yeah. and what, what they like and what they don't like. And there was one, I distinctly remember, somebody gave me one star and then just said they didn't like the book. And then I had to look to see what else they had liked. And she had... Um, given five stars to a book about Jimmy Savile and all the terrible things he did. <laughs> Couldn't put it down, she said. And she gave five stars to bags that you put fish in before you microwave them. And I thought, <laughs> I don't think you're for me anyway. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> why, what, did, what was the question? I've I forgotten the question. I know, it's so, so oh. exciting. I know, you talk, you talk about depression and you, know, you talk about oh, yeah. counselling, going to counselling, yeah. getting through. I mean, it's quite... You know, it's, it was, but that's very emotionally honest and very honest, mm. generally speaking. But I think when you, that's what I was thinking, when, you, when somebody asks you to write, or when it's suggested to you to write an autobiography, which it was a long time ago, and I was like, no, 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 like, there's nothing, like, nobody wants this and there's nothing to say. And then after a while I thought, well, if I could write one but also make it a bit self-helpy, because self-help books have in the past helped me quite dramatically, so I thought if I could do tips along the way of ways, you know, that, so, so yeah, so I have talked about having counselling, because I just don't think people talk about counselling enough, and... I think that people think you're really together when you have a job like this and you you want you want people to tell people no 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 like there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes and a lot of people sort of helping you know and helping keeping you moving and stuff yeah. and uh, and I just thought it was really good to talk about counseling in a really open way um because I think I, my argument is always like I get my car checked over at regular intervals why wouldn't I get my brain checked over every now and again as well and I just think the more people talk about it the more it's kind of normalized and the more people go oh maybe I'll have counseling maybe I'll try that rather than it being like a thing that you sort of you know sweep under the carpet sure but you, you, you work to the job centre. Yeah. And you talk about... It's just you went straight from depression into working no, no, at the job centre. No, no, go, go back to depression. But you talk about, going, you talk about being unhappy in that job, which is not necessarily yeah. that surprising. But you were, try, you were trying to get... I mean, you talk about half-jokingly saying you were trying to get run over on the way. 
to yeah do. it was a really busy road outside the job center and i used to i didn't it wasn't like i didn't want to kill myself i just thought if i could break a leg or a couple of ribs and have a bit of time off because it's hard it's a really it's it's clearly not as hard as the people coming in everybody coming in is having a tougher time than you but you don't get any you get training in like how to work the computers and how to talk about benefits and how to look for job searches and things but you don't get trained in how to deal with somebody who's come in and their life has just fallen apart and you have to talk to them and you know so there was a small amount of kind of sort of counseling involved and it's uh, and i wasn't there very long uh, and every i could tell the people who've been there a long time there was a guy came up to me at, and I said, oh, next, please. And he came. And I was on front line, they call it, where you sign on. And he came and sat down. And I, and I said, oh, next, please. And he sat down and he said, oh, you're new. And I said, oh, I've been here like six months. What makes you think I'm new? He said, you're still smiling. And I think there's something about the stuff there that you kind of, but you have to sort of shut it down because it's very emotional. And I would go home and have a good cry about all the things that had happened that day. And I think in order to do that long term, you have to be a bit more of an sort of automaton. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, but I really, I really like the helping people part. And that's sometimes what jars a little bit with the job that I have now that I think, is it doing any good? <laughs> compared to like helping people in the physical getting somebody helping somebody get a job or getting them the right benefit or making people just feel better about you know their situation and how there's hope and all that sort of stuff and um and then to be like ah spunk on stage <laughs> which is most of my show um <laughs> And it's quite, yeah, it's odd to wonder if you're yeah, but it, you know, doing but then, any good. Within the book, you just you know, you say when you were low after your divorce, you went to see Linda Smith yeah. and you're on your own and thought, oh, am I going to go? I don't want to go comedy on my own. Yeah. And then you went and it was like, a, again, one of those, you know, you come out of it feeling better because of the comedy. Totally. It was so odd because I had tried to get a ticket and then it had been sold out. So they put me on a waiting list and I was like, nah, whatever. And then in the middle of that, I'd got, after that, I'd got uh, split with my ex-husband. And then I was walking through the park from my old flat to my parents' house with like my last box of sort of odds and ends. And I got a phone call to say a ticket was available to see Linda Smith. And I thought, oh God, can I face it? Because my face was permanently like puffed up because I was crying all the time. Mm -hmm. And and uh, and I thought, oh, sorry, I'm going to go. And I went and just for like those two hours because she was incredible for those two hours i it didn't make anything better but it made me able to cope a bit more because i laughed like a drain and then i walked and none of those people around me gave a shit or knew what was going on or and obviously in every audience there's people who have stuff going on and we don't know um and then i came out and while i did all my all my shitty life was still <laughs> my shitty life but i felt like i was i could put the plates back up and start spinning them again because I'd had that kind of release and relief sure. of, of having a bloody good laugh so I all like that's kind of to sound not to sound too sort of sanctimonious but that's every now and again I think maybe yeah. I do that for somebody else I mean, in yeah, the like audience. what 200,000 people going to see every tour 10 years one of them's probably finding you that funny <laughs> <laughs> so was you know you? it's been was it you <laughs> <laughs> just looking on in admiration <laughs> look well you can't fill a big room like this <laughs> <laughs> he tries, doesn't he? <laughs> but he fails. <laughs> um, <laughs> where should we go next? That's the question. That's the big question for me. I think it was quite... Because I think your school days have obviously, like, uh, impacted on you a lot. What, what I quite like about it is you talk about being like clever at school and how mm. that's that's what it's, and I, I remember thinking feeling this at school because i was clever at school as well believe it or not i don't know what happened uh but we like sport the sporty kids are allowed to show off about being sporty and mm. the, but if you show off about being clever you'll be beaten up and in fact it's you know it's you have a terrible time yeah, you sort of have to hide that away yeah and i don't i wasn't like over like i wasn't like the cleverest person in the year or anything but i was in the top class for all the things yeah. and, and and it is true like people if you're good at art everybody's like wow you're so good at art and if you're good at sport exactly everybody's you know you're in all the teams and but you can't be like Ooh, maths <laughs> then just <laughs> um but yeah it was and i didn't I, I sort of i enjoyed the learning part of school but i didn't really yeah. enjoy the other kids um I got on really well with the teachers. I invited my maths teacher to my 12th birthday party. <laughs> and she came and she brought a husband because she's obviously said, this is fucking weird, you're coming <laughs> with us. Uh, but yeah, and I, I enjoyed school from the learning point of view, but I didn't really enjoy it. But my, my dad used to say to me, but school days are the best days of your life. And I used to think, fuck. 
Like, that's bad, isn't it? <laughs> if you're having a shitty time at school, it's going to get only worse. And it's rubbish, because obviously I went to college, yeah. and then you find your tribe, you find your friends wherever you are, and, and had a much nicer time at college and then in work yeah. after that. But that, that way that... I mean, I think probably most... The majority of people probably feel at school that they're not fitting in or worried mm. about fitting in. Uh, and But then that feeling, I think, you know, it, 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 in all everything you're writing, it's finding who you are as an adult and being happy mm. but a lot of a lot of that fear is the not fit the not fitting in as a kid yeah. but then when i when my book came out and a bunch of friends read it they said oh my god i was that person in that class so they were me yeah so if only like and there's only ever like a handful of people in the school that are you know feel like they i maybe everybody feels like they're on their own i don't know i think a lot of people feel like they belong uh, but all my friends said oh my god i was that person and yeah. so i have found all of those people from from the school that yeah. were, you know, from different schools but in different like a, parts a, of the country. A, a lot of comedians, especially, I don't know if I've, I've read in books of their autobiographies talking about, and you you allude to this, I think, at least in your question and answers on your website, of like the people who bullied you at school then get in touch with you as adults and say, hey, it's me from school. Can yeah. I come and see your show? I don't, you know, what are you doing? And they, they obviously don't remember. They've either wiped out that they mm. bullied you or they don't feel they did bully you. Or yeah, and that's the or... tricky thing. Like, I think if they didn't think... So I had this um, this woman who emailed me. So there's a... On my, Q, on my FAQs on my website, one of the questions is, can we be friends now that you're on the telly even though I bullied you at school? And it just says... No. Because <laughs> I thought, if anybody's going to... Before the email, maybe they'll check my website and then it'll save them the bother, <laughs> yeah. you know. But there was one woman who's emailed me who I hadn't seen for a long, long time and she was a cow at school to me, really awful, trying to move other people away from me. And she was really, like, <laughs> just an awful person. And she emailed me, but not even just, how are you, or I see you're doing well, or, but just this huge... A long email with all where she'd lived and how she'd got married and she had all these kids. All this information I didn't fucking ask for <laughs> and quite frankly never wanted. And she said, sort of, I did it in part of one of my shows and she she said at the end, uh, you know, maybe we could keep in touch. And, and, and I was thinking, how can I reply to her? Because if I say you bullied me, she can say, no, I didn't. And if I say, I think you, you know, I felt bullied by you, it's, you've got to be careful how you say it. So I just said, I just replied, uh, this is probably the only reply you'll get from me because I don't remember you very favourably. Right. And I sent that because I thought she caught, there's nothing in there she can argue with. Right. And obviously never heard from her again. Oh. And then did it in a show and uh yeah and did it on a dvd which has since been on the telly then so you send that to her send yeah. the copy to <laughs> send her the DVD you're never to gonna her. hear email from me but i'm gonna just constantly remind Signed you crying. <laughs> uh but yeah she was yeah just she'd forgotten or didn't know yeah. what she'd done or... or just people don't realize you know you don't realize the impact of what you're doing i think people maybe i've sort of think really every... I, Do you think? I think to an extent you can. I think people. I think probably there's somebody out there who remembers being bullied by you that you don't. You wouldn't consider yourself being bullied by just the way well, I kids hope are. Not. But I yeah. barely spoke at school, so <laughs> it but would some... have to have been a look. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Or, I hope you know, maybe not. they think. I really uh, hope not. I maybe don't not, know. But... I think. I think kids are fucking horrible. Yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah, they are. And I think um, if you stand out, then. It's sort of waving a flag for all of that kind of people to take the piss out of you. You've got glasses, you're fat, you're whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and then, but when you're, and that it's a shame because that can make people conform and then think, well, I have to be the same as everybody else. And then, but when you're an adult and you stand out, it's awesome. Yeah. And all of those, a lot of those girls that were horrible to me have got boring jobs and you know, and they don't stand out because they conformed. And that, while at school, that's awesome. In real life. Fucking dull. Yeah. So in a way, it's fair that... <laughs> Thanks, guys. In a way, it's fair that the sporty, cool kids at school get that like that brief ten years of being a hero because their, yeah, their mean, lives are going to be awful Well afterwards. done for being good at netball, but where does, where does that get you? <laughs> no, it's not even a sport now. Just at school. That and the recorder. Useless. <laughs> so, yeah, I think... But I think those are the things that... If you've got kids, that you have, you've got to nurture those things. And if they're a bit weird and a bit, you know, yeah. sort of out of the ordinary, that's great. And you've yeah. got to nurture that. And that's why, like, when I, 
at school I was quiet as a mouse and then I'd get home and I'd be reading poems from behind a curtain <laughs> and earning bananas um, and tap dancing on the tiles around the cork boiler and all of these things and my it's testament to my parents that that little sort of side of me has ended up becoming like all of me sure and I love the story in the book about you know being you know, the sort of typical get, get being last picked at games mm. but then one of the game teachers allows you to be the captain of netball oh, so yeah. you pick the pick the team yeah so she so i was always the last uh and uh one team indeed actually in netball chose to be one man down rather than have me on the team <laughs> and uh and then there was what that one day and she said right you can pick and everybody was like huh and i picked every kid that was crap at sport all the kids that were left to the end the fat ones the ever just everybody who hated sport because they never got a chance to play it because they were never passed a ball to and the only time they ever had a ball was when they were putting it in a cupboard at the end <laughs> and i picked all those people and like if that was a hollywood film then we would have nailed it and we would have won and we got absolutely hammered of course we did <laughs> but we had a, such a lovely time <laughs> It's such a cool that, but I just think the ability to think like that as a kid and to go fuck it, I'm gonna. I'm but gonna... also, they were my friends, though. It's yeah. not that unusual to think that I wasn't gonna pick the ones that were good at sport because I didn't really know any of them. I didn't like any of them, and I was gonna pick the ones that were a bit yeah. crap because we were always like, you know, standing at the side. They used to put me in like two fields away when we played rounders, just in case. There was one girl who used to absolutely batter the ball and it would go so far and that would, I just had to pay attention for her <laughs> but then because I was so rubbish at throwing it was quicker for me to just run with the ball I was so bad at it but it's not really affected my adult life to be <laughs> shit at rounders <laughs> but I think don't you think all comics have got stories like this I'm not but mostly yeah it's a it's a it's a all the, the the bullying thing and the, and and I think that's because I mean comedies that you know that kind of joking at school it's a but it's inclusive but it's exclusive there's always someone who's like mm. on the outside I guess of every joke really and often if you're doing comedy right the person on the outside deserves to be on the outside or at least mm. there's a camaraderie between a certain type of people and they're laughing at the people above them and I suppose at school it goes the other way is that it's there's, you're mm. in you're in that group, and you think, "Fuck, I'm in the group. I don't want to be not in this group." So it is that herd mentality. And if you're yeah. weird, then you're the one who gets laughed at. But then I suppose that teaches you how to be funny in a different way. Yeah, I was never, I was never funny at school. I was funny at home, but I was right. never. But I was. It's too. It takes confidence, I think. And I would never do anything that would flag me up for potential ridicule. So I barely spoke. Right. And then at home, obviously. A complete nightmare <laughs> clearly just tap dancing my way around the house so i think it and i think that's a confidence that comes when you've got friends and when your friends you you know you when you're with your friends you joke and you make them laugh and and when i left my job um all the women were like oh my god you're also always so funny and i never thought i was particularly funny at work even but they all said oh they would really miss me because obviously they thought i was funny so bless them yeah it and works they put posters then. up about Richard Maitley. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's good. God bless him. Exciting. And what I didn't know, well, I think maybe I knew this, but you'd, you, when you'd, so you, you, you did a, a, a course with a writer, was it With writing poets. Uh, so it was a course for people who'd written, is this the one? Yeah, the, yeah. People who'd written but never performed. Yeah. And it was mostly for poets who wanted to become performance poets. And I just signed up to a course on one of the days uh, on my lunch break uh, in the civil service. And it was just, I'd, I'd written stuff and it was just for people who'd written but never performed. And I thought, I'll go along and do that. And it was like a half day. Was that the live theatre? Or was, was that a different no, thing? No, no, it was, um, it was uh, through Kate Fox. Do you right. know Kate Fox? Uh, yes. Kate Fox? Oh, she's this. And, uh, and then we performed at Cademan Hall, Cademan Hall in Gateshead that evening. And it was, I performed a monologue because it wasn't yeah. stand-up and I performed a monologue. And it was sometimes quite sad because it was about what, my divorce. And I'd written for a long time, bits and bobs. Um, and then sometimes I would get these big laughs. And I went to the toilets afterwards and I... I, I rang my dad from the toilet and I was like, I've done it, I've done it. Because I just didn't think it was something I could ever do. And I did it and I sort of jumped up and down. And then I thought, well, that's it. I'm done. I don't need to do that anymore. I was ticked off the list. And then like six months later, I rang Kate Fox back and said, I think I want to try doing stand-up. And she said, I know. And she'd been <laughs> waiting all that time. Right. And then she got me my first gig and then that's it. That's and you met next. Gary at your second gig. Yeah. Did, did, did you fall in love with him there straight away? <laughs> 
I fancied him a lot. Uh, I don't believe in fall. I don't look, believe in love at first sight, but I did. He was hilarious because he is hilarious, and uh, and I did a nice gig as well. And and yeah, I just I thought, oh, I want to get to know him a bit more. Do you bang him that night? <laughs> <laughs> well, you were there. You were balls deep. Uh, <laughs> is that in the emergency <laughs> question? It is not. Uh, <laughs> terrible question. Very like to apologise. I had something else I was going to go on to, but now I've just got the image of <laughs> Gary Delaney bearing down on me. It's nice, isn't it? It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> a beautiful thing. It's a lovely boy. Um, he is a lovely boy. And you were, what did you do with Jerry? Jeremy Heron used to direct my yeah. plays. And you, yeah. You, like back in the 90s. Mm, before with I was little born. Bit of, yeah. Um. And, that, and now is an, a, a massive... Big deal in He's with award winning so amazing. director in the West End. I did a, a playwriting workshop with him right. and Jez Casey at Live Theatre. Right, and yeah. uh, and he was, he because I applied for an Arts Council grant and he was my letter of recommendation. He sort of said to, like, got a letter of recommendation from him. And I saw him when I, not this time I was in Melbourne, but he was in Melbourne when I was there the last time. Oh, right. And he came to my show and it was so lovely to see him. He's such yeah. a great man. But yeah, he's in, like, he was always. <laughs> Brilliant, but yeah. now he's brilliant and super successful. Which he's nearly got the same surname as me. That's why I work with him. Oh, is that your yeah. rule? <laughs> that's it. Yeah, so I just can, work. So people, people with... think maybe you directed it yourself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or that it was my brother, but it changed his last name by one letter. <laughs> he's a great man and a yeah, lovely man. He's all right. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing okay for himself. It's all right. Damn, what was I going to ask you? It's something great. Never mind. It will come back to me. Um, so you're a workaholic. You're not working. Are you taking some time off at the moment? Or I'm you... working a bit. Yeah. I'm making a Radio 4 series. Oh, yeah. And, um, and then I'm going to have a bit of time off because I'm, cause I've been on tour for a year. And then I did... Well, you do really long tours. You yeah. do tour for a long time. Well, because I don't do arenas, because I don't really like arenas. I don't think they suit me. That's, what, that's how I feel about yeah, arenas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, arenas have sometimes got a bar you could play there. Um <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I think I would be. I've been to see comedy in arenas, and I just watch the screen. And I think, yeah. well, I could just do that on a DVD at home. So uh, it's not for me. Um, I like I love theatres, so that's why it takes a long time. But I love it. It's it, like you know, I yeah. wouldn't do it if I didn't love it so much. And uh, yeah, so I was on tour for a year in the UK and Ireland, and then I did Australia, New Zealand, and Europe and Canada for the first. I never done those places right. before, and that was great fun. Um, yeah, so a bit of time off. And then off we go again, do hopefully, you, fingers crossed. Do you crossed. miss it when you're not doing it or do you, yeah, you're oh, yeah. itching to get back? I go back. really twitchy, really yeah. sort of, yeah. So when I wrote my book, um, I had time off. I didn't gig, obviously, because I was writing. But I had a rule where, I'm big on the rules, you probably noticed. <laughs> I had a rule where if I'd finished the amount, I, I mathematically worked out how many words I had to write per day to get it in for the deadline that I wanted to get in for. <laughs> So if I got that amount of words written that I was happy with, um, by the time that Gary left to go to his tour show, I was allowed to go with him and do a short spot at his tour show. Right. So I rewarded myself with work, like an idiot. But I love it so much. And it was really, it's really good because I think, do you ever get, when you have a big gap, do you feel twitchy? Well, I've had a really big gap from, I really have. I haven't done stand-up you for... Have. Well, I've done like three stand-up gigs. I'm doing this, yeah. and there's stand-up in this, but it's not like it's only me messing Is around. There? Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's not. It's not. You know, and it's brilliant, but it's just me. What's just around. stories about your ass? Yeah, it's <laughs> really <laughs> uh, uh, But no, so I've actually done three gigs in the last year. Ooh, but this is but this is performance. It is. Some, yeah, but, but, this I, is but performance. But I but I really thought I would miss stand-up because I've because I've been I've been doing it for. Like 18 years, like, you know, I'd been at least touring, yeah. but like I'd, I'd been gigging quite heavily. And I don't know, I think partly just because I, it means I can spend this, doing this, I can do one of these a fortnight uh, and that's it. And then I could go home and One a say, week. One yeah, a I mean, one, yeah. Week. Two, yeah. two in the fortnight. On different nights. Yeah, two different yeah. nights, very different nights. And, and you then don't, I can, so then, that ticks the box though. Does that scratch the itch? It scratches the itch and it also means I can spend some time with my small family. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're, it's young. a small family, yeah. there, but they're also young. Yeah. Uh, and that's, you know, so it's been <laughs> nice to have a bit of time home and it's been nice to, because I've been working hard, it's nice to give my wife a chance to, to work harder work. on her stuff while I'm yeah, of course. looking after the kids a bit as well. But, so, she's, but she still does, like she's, 
She's very prolific. She is very prolific, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you know, but so, I mean, we were talking about, Jim, when we talk about Jimmy talking about Morecambe and Wise, about um, Lauren Hardy mm. getting up in the morning and practicing the stuff, and, and you said, well, it's clear Jimmy does that as well. You know, the, well, the yeah, work the, ethic. The, yeah, the work and the, making it look easy by working hard, I think yeah, is yeah. what he said. Yeah, and he clearly does that. Yeah, and you do that. You, I mean, you work very hard. You work very yeah. hard. And that's, the, that's I what... I like to think so. I well, hope you, so. You, again, you talk about the book, and all comedians get this where people will say, I don't think you're funny, and you go, fair enough, that's fine. Uh, but, you know, you can't say you're not funny, because, I mean, I do, but it's, you aren't. But it's, uh, that's... That's just jealousy, that's, you know. Yeah, that's just yeah. jealousy, and, yeah. You've only been going for, like, 15 years. It's not fair. I've been doing, <laughs> I've been going for ages. Uh, as that's all that is. Uh, and also, but, you, you had, like, the ease of just being part of a double act, yeah, which is, true. you know, yeah. it's like pedding on the back of a, one of those tandem bikes, isn't it? <laughs> Somebody else is doing a lot of work up front and he's just like, woo, like that. So. I'd just do the, the punchlines, you know. It was, it was hard in a lot of ways. It's, it's amazing he's done so well without that. Um, I feel bad because you know that you're my favourite as well. <laughs> <laughs> but I know it's that, it's that thing of people saying, you know, I don't like being, you know, you, clearly you're funny because clearly you're working, you're working yeah. all the time. So, you know, you don't, comedy has this self policing system mm. where if people aren't enjoying it like the last two or three minutes of me talking <laughs> then you're not you know if yeah. i don't get a laugh again in a second maybe i'm not fucking funny <laughs> shit <laughs> oh it's all right <laughs> but i think they the could audience. have saved you and they decided not to like <laughs> what a great crowd <laughs> well done but you know that's it but it's the heart the heart the, the people who are successful nearly 100 percent of the time are the people who just uh, have work. to be dedicated and work yeah. at it and you I don't think anyone works at stand up quite as hard as you do I don't oh, think well that's very kind of you see I do I, I work hard because I love it and that helps obviously if you love your job it helps uh, and it's hard to clock off which it can make my brain screwy and time off is terrifying to me because I don't really know how to not work um, but we'll see how that goes maybe I'll <laughs> learn how to play netball or something it's useful um, but yeah I think it's I don't know I just feel like the audience deserve you deserve it to be as good as it can possibly be. And I think if you... Like, I've got a rule where the tickets don't go on sale for my tour unless I've written half of the show. Because I don't think the audience should be planning... Like, they shouldn't be more prepared. Like, ooh, now we'll get a taxi, and then Sandra's going to come as well, and then she, Jean's going to babysit. And people shouldn't be doing that. Well, I'm like, I don't know what it's about. <laughs> uh, so I, I feel more comfortable if it's half written before, the, okay. before they go on sale. Because then I think I know what they're buying, and it, I'm going to make sure it's good enough for their money. So mm. I think that's all it is. And I just, I really love my job. So I just want to do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good. It's good to have something you love. But, you know... You need something in your life beyond a dog. Um, Are you suggesting I need children in order to feel better about my I lack of success? Is I this? Think, are you projecting? I think, maybe. I think so. um, <laughs> <laughs> what I like on IMDb, I looked at and the, the trivia. I'm not sure this is trivia. No, really? about I've not you. looked at this. This is terrifying. Sarah decided to have no children. <laughs> is that That's trivia. trivia. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the quirky little fact about Sarah Millican. She decided to have no children. Yeah, she did. I don't think it's trivia. I think it's quite an important decision. I mean, it's a, quite, it's a correct decision. Uh, having do, having, having made the opposite decision, <laughs> you've done exactly it's the right late, thing. Flower. It's, it's too is. late for you. It is. Uh, yeah, don't, don't like them, don't want them, have no need for them. Thanks, everybody. Um, yeah, don't... Yeah, and it's... It's odd. I sometimes feel like that's the final taboo on stage. Like, if you say that, people are, like, think you're... Some people, not my audience, because my audience know what <laughs> shit they're dealing with now, but some people think you're a monster, like, because you don't... I don't know... Like, I, so, I don't know what to do with kids, but I've got one friend. I normally shake my friends off when they have kids, because I think, oh, you're just going to be boring for ages. <laughs> so... I've got one friend who's excellent, so I have to keep her. So I went to see her, and she's got two little kids. She's got a three-and-a-half-year-old and a one-and-a-half-year-old, one both little girls. And um, when I went to visit them, and I thought, oh, God, can they pick up on the fact that I don't know, like, I don't know how to talk to you, I don't know what to do with you. <laughs> and, of course, they don't at all. They just climb on you and give you books to read. And one of them, as soon as I went in the playroom, just the little one, who's one-and-a-half, just ran straight behind a shop like it was a new customer. <laughs> and I thought that was the most adorable thing I've ever seen. But it's still, after an hour and a half, I was exhausted, like, mentally drained from all of the reading, all of the wooden lollies I had to pretend to eat. 
And I went home and just waved my friend goodbye and she <laughs> cried at the window. She's trapped for another 20 years. <laughs> Come back soon. I'd be like, yeah, in a year and a half or so. Yeah, there's no, um, I, there's no escape from the tunnel for me. I've, worked, I've just accepted it. I've only got, I haven't got, I haven't got 20 years left, have I? I'm going to be looking after them for yeah, the rest how, of my yeah, time. That's true. Uh, you, yeah, they'll be like teenagers when they wipe on your ass, won't they? <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice to, you know, it's nice that. Maybe they'll have a bucket it... ready for when you're vomiting, <laughs> so you don't have to vom on your own shit. I hope so. Yeah. No, so it, it, you know, it's some people have kids and it's great and well done them and hurrah. But it's it's a decision and it's also okay to go, eh, not for me. Well, it's sort of more than okay because also there's a lot of people in the world and so we don't need, you know... Too Two many more people. tiny Richard Herons. I'm not, I'm not criticising Jimmy Cricket for having four kids, but come on. <laughs> uh, two's all right because you're just then that's the same number. The same... Well, there's two of you and you've got two kids. One each. Yeah. And that's so the same up. population. <laughs> <laughs> when she comes to her senses. I think they get to choose, don't they, the kids, in which case... Do they? Yeah, they're going with, the, they're going with my... I'd like to have them, but I think they'll go with my wife. You don't... <laughs> you don't sound that gutted, if I'm honest. <laughs> well, that'd canny, be nice to sleep canny, again. Li- yours are canny little things, your two. Yeah, they're very nice. Yeah. But I haven't slept very much. Like, last night was the best sleep I've had for ages because I went to bed at about 8 o'clock because I was ill and slept through to 4 o'clock when my wife came in thinking some alarm had gone off and woke me up. It was very nice of her. <laughs> <laughs> I was sleeping upstairs in the attic. In the attic? Yeah, because I was ill. There's a bed, there's a bed up there. I'm not so weird. It's, a, it's rooms. <laughs> We're learning more about each other than yeah, we ever, we ever have Yeah, more than I before. want, but yeah. Hey, I mean, uh, Christ, we better go home, haven't we? Uh, it's, uh, I don't have to worry because I'm staying uh, in uh, the Furchester Hotel over the road. <laughs> I haven't checked in yet. Oh, so that's not the one that you've shut in? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, that one's in Ipswich. That's fine. Oh, yeah, that's of a course. long time I ago. About that. No, no, I did. No, I have shut in that yeah. one. You're right, yeah. <laughs> Was that on stage or backstage we talked about that? Can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> You explained that there was no, there's no toilet brushes in hotels. It was backstage. So it's just all full of skiddy still. <laughs> my, my husband genuinely thought that toilet brushes were for unblocking toilets. <laughs> How terrifying is that? Who fucking raised you? That's what I keep saying sometimes, and he just tells us it's his mum. And... <laughs> oh, I was going to talk... Your dad... Your, let's talk quickly about your dad, and then we'll go, because I want to talk about the... You, you're very... Uh, I mean, your dad sounds like a fantastic man. Yeah. And I've seen him on the telly, and I love him. Yeah. Uh, I, you went to your dad for advice uh, about... <laughs> we'll end on this, I think. About... <laughs> which most people wouldn't go to their dad about, about how triple anal sex works. So... Um, there was these three fellas. No. Um, no, I was... I... Because I was newly divorced and I was living with my parents. Uh, and my dad is an engineer. Uh, was an electrical engineer. And has a very much an engineer's brain. And I thought he would enjoy, like, the puzzle of it. <laughs> and I did... I said to him, because I'd... Um, I'd heard that this was a thing and I wondered if it was a new thing that people are doing and I was newly divorced and maybe it was something I had to brush up on. <laughs> so I asked him, how would you... I was trying, I couldn't figure out how you do it. Is it like in a conga or is it... <laughs> are they all getting into this? I don't know. And my dad had said, uh, you'd tie them all together. And I had to point out that they did have men attached. <laughs> they weren't just disembodied cocks. That's a very different question. But yeah, because he's an engineer, there's always diagrams for things whenever he's yeah. just, you know, trying to work something out logically. I've got kind of a bit of a logical brain, the same as him. But yeah, it was good to chat about it. Yeah. And we all learned something. <laughs> that thankfully, my dad doesn't know what it is. <laughs> Phew. It is a puzzle, though. Yeah. Did you ever really get to the bottom of it, so to speak? <laughs> uh, and that's the sort of thing you can expect when he goes back out on tour. Uh, 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 no, not really. I think conga is probably what yeah. it is. I mean, is it? Does anybody know? 
I mean, there must be people know must be there. instructional videos online. There are for instructional most videos. Oh, I'm glad that you've stopped doing the horrible website. You know that horrible website you used to read up on about oh, when yeah. people had their sex fantasies yeah. about a British comedian. It was fucking awful. Yeah. I'm glad you've now changed to IMDb. Thank <laughs> God. It's my funny barren trivia. <laughs> you decided not to have children. It's not you yeah, could have them, but you've decided not to. Yeah, well, I don't really know. So. Okay. This answer to you. Well, there's always we can find out tonight. To answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. What, because you're so virile? Is yeah. that what you're saying? <laughs> I left some sperm on that chair. <laughs> it should have worked its way up by now. I thought it <laughs> Well, I think it is uh, six nil to Richard Herring after our. Uh, uh, after our <laughs> Somebody really... said, "No, it's not." <laughs> It's not, it's not. This is one sport that you're okay at. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck netball. Must, must. I'll just do this. It's very fun. It's much uh, more fun. It's love to have you. Uh, oh, Elephant thanks. in the Room is your radio show. When yeah, it starts out? on the 4th of July uh, on Radio 4 at 11pm. And it's a panel show with uh, four, I'm the host and there's three women and one male guest okay. each week. I it's... haven't had the invite in through for that, but I'm sure that will come through. And, yeah, uh, yeah, we are sure just generally provide... booking it on the day. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll go through my diet. I've got my mainly free. Um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, give a massive reward and applause. It's Sarah Milligan! Thank you very much! Right, I'll be back there in a bit. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>